Uh, good afternoon, folks. So, uh, you know, it's late in the afternoon, but I'm here to excite you hopefully a little bit. Uh, we're uh, we're going to talk about how to run enterprise workloads in the OpenStack cloud, what technologies it takes, what capabilities it takes, and what, chal what challenges exist. I'm a product ma My name is Alok Prakash. I'm a product manager in data center software division of Intel. So uh, I was told to put this slide in. We were talking about transforming uh, the business ecosystem and infrastructure, and I'm going to hopefully touch a little bit of all of these three things in my uh, talk. And of course, this is the legal notice. If you want to read this, you can read it at your pleasure later. I'm going to skip over this. <laughs> So let's talk about uh, running enterprise workloads. What you know, what's happening right now, and what will it take to you know get there? So, well, for most IT shops, they are, as we've gone around and talked to them, uh, they have uh, some some applications that have already gone to the public cloud because they had the urgent need. The line of business managers wanted to get it done, and they moved there. And so they have this shadow IT problem that they're trying trying to solve. That is, get some strategic control, get some uh, you know governance on that. On the other side, they're virtualized, and they want to move up from virtualization to IT as a service. So as you know, both of these uh, infrastructures come together as a strategy, many of the enterprises want to collapse those things so, so that they can run all of those workloads on a, you know, a single infrastructure. So you know, they want to start with a private cloud initiative for that uh, servicing internal customers. They want to run all of these uh, workloads, including enterprise workloads, in that same virtualized and cloud infrastructure while meeting their service level needs. And the key is that enterprise workloads require much higher service levels than uh, you know, normal workloads because the cloud workloads, because the developers left the company or they're just a package binary program, it cannot handle uh, variations in performance, those kinds of things. And the lastly, not, not, but not the least, if you, if you have to service a line of business and grow really fast, you need to be able to take uh, hardware, software, everything that's integrated and deploy very quickly. So though, while the, that's what IT wants to do, setting up and operating a cloud is difficult, and a new set of cloud services and uh, monitoring and, and management tools are needed uh, to be able to handle the enterprise level requirements. And we'll touch base on, on a few of these. So uh, I'm going to touch about three uh, you know, bigger problems that we've heard about uh, you know, in challenges in running enterprise workloads. Uh, first one is around the trust, and the other one is around performance and availability. So the trust problem, I, you know, I'll characterize it as a nosy problem and a noisy problem. So nosy problem, the concern there is that if I have one important virtual machine running there, can I have a nosy neighbor that will, you know, because a, a cloud is after all like an apartment complex, you have, you know, multiple small little slices, and can one VM pick into the next VM and, uh, you know, maybe look at the data or do something to the VM. So that's one concern, uh, especially when going to uh, public cloud. That concern exists something in the private cloud as well, within the uh, enterprise. So that's one problem, is my uh, system running on a trusted node, can it, you know, can, can it be compromised, can my, is my BIOS okay, is my hypervisor in a trusted whitelist, has somebody booted up something that shouldn't be there, Those, that's one level of, uh, you know, uh, things that people want from the uh, cloud infrastructure. The other one is performance. And performance is a bigger, big challenge, because if you think of it, uh, today we do uh, cloud machines or machine instances, uh, you know, based on uh, vCPUs and memory, but a vCPU from five years ago is not the same as, as a vCPU running on a new processor. So you've got huge difference in performances. And this is very true when if you go to many of the public clouds, you can see, you can get an M1 large or M1 medium, and you will see, you know, depending on the time of the day and when you get it, you'll get, you know, vastly different performance. I know that some uh, customers that we talked to used to go out and get thousands of VMs and then run a little benchmark, see which ones worked well, keep those and give away all the rest. So that's an unusual set of activities for a, a customer to have to go through to get their workloads running in that. And, and the other problem with uh, performance is uh, also uh, how to avoid a noisy neighbor problem. That is, if you have one virtual machine that's running, uh, you know, let's say it's running some uh, streaming media application, and it's always changing the frames of video. So it's going to trash the CPU cache. And when it trashes the CPU cache, the next VM is not going to get its pages in the cache, and its performance is going to suffer. You cannot detect that by putting an agent in the VM or any other way. And uh, you know, this is this, uh, so that's an, an example of a, a noisy neighbor problem. And, it, and the symptom of that is often 
in, uh, you know, in, in terms of customer calling and saying, hey, my application is slow sometimes. And these are the hardest problems for uh, IT uh, operators to debug. Because if they have, uh, you know, it, might, it might be the application, it might be the cloud infrastructure, it might be this noisy neighbor problem, it could be somewhere else. So what IT is missing is this set of tools to be able to uh, remove this blame storming problem of you know, where, where is this, uh, you know, what is the root cause of the problem, and be able to identify, identify the probable root cause of the, the problem. And the, the other problem for most IT shops is a matter of uh, you know, trust in, that, in the sense that when I put my workload on that cloud, uh, you know, I don't have access to the telemetry of the platform. And how will I can tell that it was you know, not, not the cloud provider and not my application? So that's, those are the kinds of things you want uh, the service provider to be able to provide some additional details. So, and, and, and it's very obvious that for most new workloads, people do want to go to the software-defined infrastructure. They want to be pro able to provision the entire application uh, on you know, virtual network, virtual storage, virtual uh, compute. And uh, those three things are important. That is, they while they want to deploy the workloads on the software-defined infrastructure, they've got the problem, they have to be able to achieve the same service level uh, that they promised their enterprise customers today, and they have to be able to minimize the blame storming in all of this space. Is it the virtual machine? Is it the physical machine? Is it the cloud infrastructure? Where, where is the root cause of the problem? So uh, I'm not going to you know, spend too much time on you know, high-level details. Let's just talk about how you can solve this problem. What are people really looking to, you know, to from a usage perspective, solve, solving this? So what, what you want to be able to offer the, the customer is on the cloud services catalog that you should have machine flavors that have additional trust and performance metrics saying, this is an important VM, I'll pick a machine flavor that must run in a trusted compute pool where every node as it has booted up has been verified to say that it's BIOS, it's hypervisor, everything is in a white list. And, and we have some technologies that, you know, Mount Wilson that was talked about in the previous session. So that's one example. Uh, so the, on the service catalog, I must see that the VM has the trust level. The second, I need, need to be able to say, this work VM should have so much performance, guaranteed, minimum. And, uh, and then it should be able to burst up if there's enough capacity available in the system. So for that, I need to be able to you know, know what's the capacity of the physical system, and then as VMs are being deployed, it should be guaranteed it'll get the quota of performance that it is you know, expecting. So machine flavors need to be enhanced with the extra specs carrying this data. And if the machine flavor in the catalog has that data, you need to be, you know, and somebody tries to create an instance of that machine flavor, uh, you, you've got to be able to trap that and be able to deploy it on the right machine. So if I said I wanted in a trusted compute pool, you have to be able to trap that. So we need a filter in the Nova scheduler that traps that call and looks at the spec and says, okay, I know where the trusted compute nodes are and I will go provision uh, your VM on that node. And by the way, uh, you asked for a certain amount of performance, I will look on the system and also make sure that there aren't any noisy neighbors there right now. So that this is, you know, so that when I deploy that VM, it's going to get the performance it's expecting. So it's a more of a dynamic scheduling rather than, uh, you know, uh, just a static round robin default scheduler that, uh, you know, uh, has. So those are the requirements. So one problem is just a basic resource scheduling. The other one is once you've scheduled it, and let's say your VM is now running, of course you have to actively monitor it to make sure that it's, you know, you know, nothing bad is happening on the system. So you have to be able to monitor it, you have to be able to get this performance usage metrics, you have to be able to report it back and help with diagnostics as to what's the probable root, you know, uh, cause of that thing. And also manage your capacity so that you know, you know how many more VMs you can deploy. So th that's the set of problems that, uh, 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 you know, what is expected to be able to manage uh, so from an Intel, from Intel perspective, we looked at those gaps and said, well, you know, where are the areas that we can you know, help most? So there are three areas that, you know, I, that we've identified that we're working on. One is to help people match their workload needs to the platform capability and capacity, right? This is the box, it's got so much capacity, and, this, and it's got these uh, enhancements in the instruction set, and you have to be able to match the workload to that particular box, make sure the VM lands on that node. That's one. Uh, the other one is to be able to find and address the software-defined infrastructure issues. That is, what's the root cause? Who's causing the no who's the noisy neighbor? Who's the uh, uh, which VM is being affected? So that 
you can then go solve the problem by e either migrating the VM or migrating uh, you know, the, the noisy neighbor or the, uh, the person who's being affected, uh, the VM that's being affected. And last but not least is to you know, have trust attestation of this multi-tenant structure so that you can say, oh, they're less likely to be a nosy neighbor on this one because I've attested all of the uh, BIOS and firmware running you know, safely. And uh, you know, we as Intel have visibility into our own platform. We have uh, you know, deep insight. So we can do the telemetry at the cache level, cache contention, memory bandwidth, all kinds of things so that we can assure that uh, these problems aren't happening. So, so uh, from, an, uh, uh, from an enterprise perspective, you have two ways you can go to go you know, set up your uh, cloud so that it can handle the enterprise workloads. Uh, if you already have a cloud running, you can enhance it with uh, those three components that I mentioned. Uh, you know, you, you need a plugin in the Nova scheduler, you need a controller that can collect the metrics from all the nodes, and you need an agent in the platform to get the deep platform telemetry from the nodes to, to, to identify the problems. And if you don't have anything, then you need a, uh, you know, a turnkey cloud solution that will install OpenStack and all of these management con con you know, uh, solutions with it. So these are the kinds of uh, uh, areas that uh, we're trying to address with, uh, uh, with products and technology and contributions to OpenStack as well. So, uh, you know, and uh, we are looking at uh, creating, you know, what we heard from enterprise customers is that it's not enough that you throw some things, you know, code out somewhere. You've got to be able to at least have a product and support it and, you know, service. It has to come with all of that. So we're looking at launching a product very soon uh, for service, service assurance administrator. So Intel Data Center Manager, Service Assurance Administrator. So it, it'll have all the elements that I talked about so far. You know, the ability to, uh, you know, take VMs and put them on trusted nodes, uh, ability to specify performance levels and make sure that those happen. And, uh, you know, and those uh, machine flavors can then be uh, reflected in the OpenStack. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, essentially, if you have a work, work uh, application like a heat application, you can have machine flowers in there that have these additional attributes, especially maybe if you are running your database layer or some other application server that is, you know, more important than others. So you can assign higher uh, priority, higher, more resources to those uh, uh, systems. So, so, uh, what, so what, what you can do, uh, like I said, intelligent machine placement with automated provisioning with those machine flavor enhancements, scheduling of these instances on trusted tested nodes, scheduling to meet uh, performance uh, requirements, and then probable root causing. So you want to be able to monitor. We know we have seen in our uh, labs and in our experimentation that OpenStack components do fail once in a while. So you, know, you have to be monitoring not just your own applications and the infrastructure, you have to be monitoring OpenStack as well, and be able to uh, you know, uh, root, root cause uh, when there's a noisy neighbor, when there is just a failed component that's uh, surfacing the problem. So you have to have some real-time analytics because the data flow that is required from each node coming up to the controller has to be in live and continuous. So it's, you know, you have to look at, at uh, not the, the traditional monitoring tools tend to put it in a database and then, you know, look at it, uh, but that model does not apply and does not work well in a, in a cloud model. So you need to have more of a live and continuous monitoring and analytics on that. And when you detect the problem, you have to be able to, of course, uh, kick off some uh, remedial action. Move the VM to a different uh, socket, if that's a cache contention problem, maybe move it, evacuate it to a different node, and if you have live migration capability, you know, migrate it. And uh, last but not least, yeah, what you want to be able to do for your platform in the uh, server is that the server is booting up, have a little benchmark that runs there that characterizes the capacity of the system. So you know, okay, this box has this much capacity in compute capacity. And then as you allocate VM, you are specifying the same unit for uh, uh, you know, what is dedicated to that particular virtual machine and what it can uh, burst up to so that and so that you have clear visibility into the capacity of the, of the nodes and uh, how much the uh, capacity consumption and of course, you know, report it out uh, uh, to the operator. And, uh, and of course, based on that, uh, you can also report out on any of the uh, statuses. So for example, if the, your compliance requirement, IT policy requires that these VMs should run on a trusted node, 
And uh, you know, what you will have is a history from the system that every time the node booted, its uh, attestation was verified and you can generate a report and maybe it can help with your uh, IT compliance or uh, if you're in a regulatory uh, environment, maybe some of your compliance and audit uh, capabilities. So that's, that's the gist of uh, you know, what we're trying to build and we'll be uh, announcing soon. So to, to summarize, to run enterprise workloads in the cloud, you know, people want to use software-defined infrastructure built on OpenStack, and you want to be able to enhance the OpenStack to provision and monitor the machine flavors, and uh, you know, and specify the target service levels. And all of this has to, of course, uh, have happen in an automated way, not requiring any operator in the middle of it. And of course, the integration is also just as important. If all of these uh, tools and technologies and uh, data is available. Uh, you have to be able to integrate it with your existing IT tools and monitoring and management systems. So, uh, so the product, whatever product uh, is uh, enabling this capability must have REST API so you can you know, grab the data easily. It needs to have a web console in case you don't want to program and you have an enterprise customer who just wants to use the embedded web console to go do all of this management. So that's... Uh, that's a you know, quick summary of you know, what is needed for people to be able to run their enterprise workloads uh, in OpenStack Cloud. Anybody have any questions? Uh, we have a de demo of the product uh, available as well. We had it in the, uh, on the floor. And if uh, you want to contact me about more information or seeing a, a demo, you know, uh, contact me directly and I can, uh, give, I can show it to you. Okay. Um, we're kind of at the very beginning of our journey with OpenStack. Uh, our enterprise has a lot of pets, and uh, they're very sensitive to latency. Does, you know, we're used to coming from a, you know, a virtual environment like with the SXI where you can resource, allocate, and define you're going to get this much resources. Do you know, um, as far as, Parity in OpenStack, getting pinning CPUs. You know, I know KVM allows you to pin CPUs, but you know, visibility through OpenStack to do that, and so you can guarantee that if you have an app and it needs to have dedicated access to your cores, that you're going to get it, and you're not going to be over provisioned and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I think some capabilities are available through C groups, and uh, that those are capabilities that uh, you know in in our products, we, we, we use those capabilities. Uh, now, your, your QoS requirement may be more than just the compute. It, of course, comprehends IOPS for your storage and you know, networking QoS. And we are working on those technologies, too. It's, a, it's in a roadmap basis. But for, for now, we focused on the compute side. And uh, I think we can uh, you know, meet the requirements. But, you know, uh, maybe we can have a conversation later, and I can, you know, we can have an architect walk you through exactly how and, and what's uh, possible. Uh, yeah, the question was, you know, will our tools give a view of the process, the you know, the processes running inside the VM? So no, at this point the tool is geared gear towards more of the provider, like a service provider or the IT guy who is not allowed to see what's inside the VM because you know there may be a, a sensitive data running inside the virtual machine. So this is all of this is done by uh, you know essentially the gist of what this uh, tool allows you to do is that to to run enterprise workloads you run on a dedicated machine today. And what you want from the virtual machine now as you're moving into the shared environment is to get the same dedicated machine like trust and performance. And that's what the tool does. So it doesn't know anything about the application that's running inside, but it knows how the application or that VM is using the machine and is it causing issues. So it's a, a operators, it's the administrator's tool, uh, not the end user application uh, tool. I had yeah. a a couple of questions. One is with regard to um, security. You said you may have some highly sensitive workloads where you can provision in a more protected, secure. Mm -hmm. So 
is all of that more done by the operator to secure certain hosts to be uh, to have a high level of security for certain hosts versus not, and then you tag it and you place it. And in but, other words, or does the software? Yeah. So, yeah, I understand your question. So, yeah, is it a manual process or is it uh, you know done by the software? So the the you know if you saw the sessions before, we there is a technology called Intel TXT that's available in the platform, and that's a basically a trusted way of executing some code that cannot be tampered by you know, what's running in the inside and what's sort of hypervisor. So this way you can check when the system is, you, know, you can uh, make sure that the BIOS and hypervisor signatures are available, and we have technology built into our software that can help you provision that and uh, get it set up. So if, you, if your system is TXT capable, we can set it up with the uh, trusted uh, capability. Got you, may, you may have two pools. One pool that's trusted and one pool that is not. Right. And now you have a choice when you're doing a VM to say, run in the trusted compute pool. OK, and is this something enabled at the chip level, or do you write system kernel software to do it? So uh, the, you know, the, the trusted compute pool requires a trusted TPM on the platform, and there are many vendors who already have TPMs okay. in the you know, uh, marketplace. If you want, I can you know, sure. provide you a list in, you know, of uh, vendors. So, but the, uh, the, our product will work automatically as far as you're, you know, the deploying is concerned. As long as the platform is TXT enabled, you can go to our GUI console and just say, make that trusted node. And okay. we can go provision it uh, with the right. Uh, and, and a related, a similar question well, from a service performance assurance: Is it more reactive in that you're constantly monitoring it because apps can vary and you can have the noisy neighbor, or are you actually at the kernel level or the chip level providing isolation? No. So we are currently at, with the current generation uh, that will come out right now. We're monitoring only. Uh, future Intel platforms will have, you know, additional capabilities that will allow us to, you know, just make sure no violation occurs. But that's not the uh, uh, current uh, generation. Current, we'll, we are monitoring. All right. So we can, we know, you you will have ample time to know, you know, how to intervene before the problem goes on. Hi. <clears throat> when thinking of target service uh, level objectives, what kind of metrics do you think of supporting? Is it more just a CPU memory utilization, or also network bandwidth, storage IOs, or, or what, what kind of? Yeah, so uh, in our current version of the product, we focus on the compute side. Mm -hmm. So on the compute side, we are, you know, so this uh, trust status, you know, whether it's running on a trusted node or not, uh, you know, performance in terms of uh, service compute metrics, we've defined our own compute metric that can, it's more portable across processors. So. You know, what you want to be able to do is characterize the capacity of the system. And, uh, you know, it, needs, it should be aware of the frequency of the processor. It should know the generation of the processor. It should know, you know, how much cache is in the box. Because those things affect your performance, rather than just run one generic benchmark. So th those are the kinds of things we, we look at. Uh, and we produce the graphs and charts of what's going on on a per VM basis and at the uh, aggregated host level as well. So you can you know, say, OK, that, that box is noisy, or you can say that VM is suffering. Right? Uh, any other uh, questions or uh, feedback for me, or any requirements, or you know, if you want to uh, try this out? I see that the decentral includes a smart placement engine. So what is the difference between the smart engine with and the NOAA scheduler? Yeah. Smart placement, okay. Yep. So what, what, you know, the, what, what we have is a, is a plug-in to the NOVA scheduler filter. So what, you know, when a, a, in a VM is being, you know, your, when, the, when the user is asking for a machine instance to be created of a specific machine flavor, we know those extra specs carry uh, these additional attributes. So at that point, the request, the filter scheduler will, you know, re request our controller to go find the right machine. And our controller has a database of all, you know, live stream, uh, real-time data about what's happening on each of the boxes. It has under its control. So it knows whether where the noise is, where capacity is available, and where the trusted nodes and untrusted nodes are, and can go direct uh, uh, VM to that uh, particular node. So it's more dynamic in its uh, VM placement. Okay. So do you also support the runtime policy? I mean that. If some hyper load is very high and possibly we need to migrate some VM from 
from from high load hyperload to some low load hyperload. I mean, uh, does your pr product oh, also support some some uh, priority for a VM? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, Right, right now, I mean, th there are ways or schemes of doing it, and we can, you know, it's a longer answer. Uh, the, uh, uh, so we, I, we can chat, uh, step, you know, offline. Uh, you, you can always, if it's an important VM, you can always give it more dedicated capacity. That's the easy, easy answer. Uh, but uh, we have thought through this process of assigning higher priority to some VMs or the, or, or the others. Uh, but you know, it's a it's a longer conversation. So the, it isn't an easy answer. Yeah, but, we, uh, but it is possible to do that. Uh. Okay, so uh, as you said, this product also supports uh, capacity planning. Capacity planning. Well, no. So we, I mean, you have the normal IT uh, capacity planning tools. This is more capacity planning from a you know, from compute performance perspective. That's that's the data that we are producing. So this is a complement to your existing data. So it's not a replacement for what uh, as an IT shop you'd already already use. But if you are if you're building a product for a, like a blade or a rack system, and it's a uh, it's a you know it's a cloud in a box type of solution using OpenStack. There we can talk about making something that's more like a capacity planner for that box. Uh, so the scope is important. I mean, the, does the capacity planning support uh, have customer uh, uh, tell them how to deploy the VM before they want to deploy all the VMs? So, so does yeah. yeah. So what what you would see on our screen is the capacity of you know we would like I mentioned the the way the the product works. It would run a benchmark when the system is booting up for the first time. We'd characterize what capacity is available. We will show it for the node, for the host. And then as you allocate VMs, you can go on the monitoring console and see what portion of the host is taken up, what capacity is remaining. And, we'd, and on a per VM basis also, we will, you know, you can allocate certain dead blocked and certain, you know, burst capacity. You can see whether it's at, uh, you know, what level of capacity that particular VM is. So both views are uh, available. Uh, I think I'll, I'll have to connect you to an architect to answer with, you know, the, the specifics of that. Uh, we know cycles for instruction, cache contention, uh, uh, things that we get out of C groups. There's a whole bunch of metrics that, uh, uh, and also some performance counters that uh, that are gen generically available on Intel platforms, but may most people don't know how to use. So it's a uh, it's not proprietary, but it's difficult to use un unless you know you have the knowledge. And and we use take advantage of some of those capabilities as well from the platform. But I can get you with an architect who can answer more specific exactly what we use. Okay, so this all gets pushed upstream. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Mo most of it is pushed to our uh, management controller, which can then look at the streaming data and then does an analysis of that. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Do we upstream it? So, yeah, the the plan is to uh, upstream a lot of these capabilities. Uh, you know, but uh, the question is, which one happens first? I think we are right now. We are in the model of let's implement it, get it running, get it in, in the hands of people, and then we'll figure out you know, the model for uh, yeah, upstreaming it. Uh, very soon, in a matter of a few weeks, the first. Well, first version, and uh, we have about the, the yeah the yeah the yeah. No, it's independent of the release. It, uh, the product will work on current generation uh, processors, so it's not you know tied to a uh, processor. Though, when a new processor comes up, we will be there time to market, and we will take advantage of all the new things that are there in the newer processors. So. So it's a separate pro product right now. It's a commercial product. It's supported commercial product. Thanks. Though I get the exact opposite reaction for some other people. <laughs> but yes, I think that's from enterprise customers. People want something that is a product and somebody is standing behind it. Any other questions? 
If not, uh, hope, hope this was useful and that uh, you know, you'll find this technology useful maybe in your enterprise. <laughs>